This is the Flip Try It kit, and it's like a starter kit for the Parallax Flip. So it comes with the board itself and a bunch of peripherals that make it easy to get started making things. So inside the kit, there's a little Get Started card. And on the back, it has a uh, resistor color code identifier chart. So that's pretty handy. And a little diagram to help you remember which way to wire up LEDs. And also some basic information about capacitors. The kit also contains, obviously, the flip module itself. A micro USB power cable. Jumper wires. Bunch of jumper wires whole bunch of resistors and looks like some diodes. Ooh, a four direct direction tilt sensor. So we should be able to wire this up to the board and start sensing orientation and stuff. It also comes with these alligator clips. Those are probably to go with this, which is a DC motor that you can just clip onto. Another pack of what looks like components. There's a lot of stuff in this one. So we got some uh, electrolytic capacitors. That's a big one right there. Uh, more resistors. These are individually packaged, which makes me think that they might go together intentionally. It's got more jumper wires. More resistors. These seem like they go together too. There's some capacitors some header pins and a resistor, some LEDs, more resistors, and so here we've got, looks like a potentiometer, a little dial, a couple little tactile buttons, uh, this looks like a buzzer, a little transistor, and then a little seven segment display. And then this I'm a bit surprised with. It comes with a, a nice sized breadboard in there. You can never have too many of these. Looks like it's got a sticky back so you can adhere it to something. And then finally there's a little number pad. I don't know what kind of projects they have for this thing. So it doesn't come with a booklet or anything. Um, I'm guessing all of the information is going to be online. Probably where this big font gets started here is. So the first project I decided to build with the board is a musical instrument. This is the configuration that I came up with, and I'm going to use this touchpad as like a keyboard to enter in notes, and then this little buzzer is going to play the note. So the setup for this is pretty easy. I've got a ground wire running to this ground bus, and then I've also got a wire running from ground to the negative side of the buzzer, and then a wire running from the positive side of the buzzer to pin 7 on the flip. Next I have four wires here running from pins 11 through 8 all the way to these resistors that are then running all the way through to another set of resistors into that ground bus. But you'll notice in between those is the touchpad leads and if you look up these touchpads on the Parallax website, they'll give you an explanation of how to connect all of this. But basically, this touchpad, you'll notice there's 16 keys on it, but only 8 leads coming out of it. So the way that it's handling all 16 of these buttons is by using multiplexing. And what that means is, basically, 4 of these pins map to rows, and 4 of these map to columns and half of them are basically going to be used as inputs, and the other half are going to be used as outputs. So the code is basically going to go through the pins on the output side and try each one and see if it gets an input. And whichever input it gets is going to correspond to that particular row, and uh, whichever output was what caused it is going to correspond to the column. And that's how they're able to figure out which key was pressed. The nice thing is that we don't have to worry about all of those details if we're using Blockly, because it has a block specifically for this pad, and it'll handle all that behind the scenes. It just gives you a little block that you can place in that represents the key being pressed, and you can use it elsewhere in your program. And then you'll notice that the other four pins from this pad are just connected to these last four pins on the flip. 
So then the idea is that as I press keys up here, the signal will be sent all the way to the flip, and then the flip will send musical notes out to this buzzer and we'll hear the sound. And as far as hardware goes, that's it. Now we just need to plug in the flip and then go edit some code in Blockly. Okay, so this is Blockly. And I've got my Blockly client running, which is what detects the flipboard connected through USB. And then it allows this web UI to communicate with my flipboard. So here I have my program all pulled apart and I'll go over what all of these blocks are going to do. So first I'm creating an array. I'm naming it scale and saying that it's going to be 16 elements. And then I'm going to fill that array named scale with these comma separated values. Now this is the frequency for each note in my musical scale. Basically I wrote a Python script that would calculate the frequency of each note in the scale. And then I just copied and pasted that into here. You can enter in any frequencies here and have them correspond to different key presses. So now I've got my scale array filled and I'm just gonna clip it onto there. And now these will behave like a like a single unit. So they're connected now. And then I'm gonna initialize the keypad. And so this sets up Blockly so that it knows which pins the keypad are plugged into. That's pretty easy. If you mouse over it, it even gives you a little description of what's going on. So I'll just click that into place. So my setup is done and I wanna start my main loop. So I've got this loop block and it can have a terminating condition. I'm just using forever, but you can have it run some number of times or run until something happens or while something is true. In this case, it's gonna run forever because inside of it is what we're gonna to use to tell what key's being pressed and what to play. So everything inside of this loop block is gonna happen once every loop. And the first thing I wanna do on each loop is set a variable named key to be the output of that four by four keypad. And that's all this little block does. You can plug other data sources into this and it'll assign that value to this variable. So the next I'm gonna use a condition on that key because if no key is pressed, then this block is going to return negative one. So the value of the key variable will be negative one. And my condition here is checking to say, hey, is the value of key greater than negative one? Because if it's not, I don't want to play any notes. That means that no button is being pressed. But if it is, then we'll get to the contents of this little condition block. So if the key is being pressed, this value will be greater than negative one, and we'll get to here. And all this is going to do is say, I want to play a frequency on pen 7, which is going to be half a second, so 500 milliseconds. And then the block that you connect into here is the frequency that gets played. Now this block is saying, I want to get this element from this array. So we've got this array of frequencies for my scale, and I want to get the element which is the value of key that we got from the keypad. So it's pretty simple, right? This key is being used as a lookup into this scale array, and that's how it knows what frequency to play. So with everything connected, you can run it either once where it runs it from memory, or you can load it into the EEP ROM, which means that you can turn the device on and turn it back on again, and your program will still be loaded in there. So that's what I'm gonna do in this case. And you can see it gives you some feedback here, tells you what's going on, and there we go. We've just successfully programmed the flip using the Blockly interface. Blockly Prop is a great learning tool because it makes writing programs feel more intuitive to beginners. Like if I sat someone down in front of a text editor and asked them to write a program using a language they've never used before, they wouldn't have any idea where to start. It takes a lot of boring research and time reading tutorials and references just to have some basic idea of how to start coding. But here, I sat down in front of Blockly and was building programs for a multi-core microcontroller without having to read much of anything. 
As a programmer, I probably wouldn't use Blockly in any serious capacity, just because it is more limiting in some ways than actually writing code. But as a beginner, the limits are what make it perfect. There's only so many types of blocks you can drag into your program, and there's only so many ways that they can snap together. So the interface as a whole is more discoverable because you can see your options and you can try things and get feedback right away. And there's a one-to-one -one correlation between these blocks and most programming languages. Conditions are conditions conditions, and iteration is iteration. Different languages will call them different things, but the core concept is still there, and that's what Blockly teaches you. So when you move on to more complex languages, you'll already get those concepts. Now one thing that's interesting is, Blockly is actually generating C code behind the scenes when it programs the flip. You can see that if you go over here to this code button. This is the code that it's creating from those blocks which I think that's fascinating. You can build these things out of all these blocks and then actually go in and look at the code that it's using to program the flip with. So you can see that uh, this part down here is being used to get that keypad button based on all the pins that are sent to it. And it's using this multiplexing loop to figure out which key was pressed based on the row and column. It's fascinating. So all of this complexity is being reduced into this simple block right here. And I can't think of a better way to end this video than by playing a little tune, so here we go.